Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very special watch, as you can see, uh, with a very strange dial and a very strange way as well to read the time. Uh, it's a Mati Automatic. I'm just checking now if the, if the watch is working and you can see it's quite an old watch. It's a very funky design as well, very 70s or 80s. A uh, strange uh, way to read the time, like I said. It looks like a, a digital watch. Just checking now if it's uh, if it's working. Just winding the watch. See, it looks like uh, we have a second hand right in the middle, like this uh, little triangle hands for for the second. Yeah, we see the time it's changing, and you see we have a jumping hour and with the minute like on the inside disc there. We have a date and a day as well, but. The change, like you see, the, the, the day is moving, but the date is not moving. So yeah, there is something wrong with this watch, definitely. Again, let's see at 12, around 12 o'clock, if we see a jump. Yeah, you see the day change, but not the date. So yeah, there's something wrong. Quick say date as well. I look like it's pulling, but it's doing something. But actually, nothing is moving. When I pull on a crown, I feel like a, a spring action. It's probably a quick say date. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work. So that, that's not good. When I put it on a time graph, you can see the actually the reading is quite good yeah, for this watch. The amplitude at 270, the bit error is quite low at 0 0.3, and it's just uh, turning around zero or minus one second per day, which is really good. Uh, obviously, we're going to do a, a full service on this watch. We are going to disassemble everything. So hopefully, we get some better results on a time graph, but this was actually quite already good, yeah? This is an automatic watch and you can see there is a rotor inside. There is not too much play on a rotor. See the movement is beating there. Yeah, it looks good. 25, 25 joules. Just removing the air. There's a kind of C-clips which is retaining the rotor from the winding mechanism. Yeah, but now I should be able to lift it up very gently. Perfect. I'm really curious to see what's inside and what makes this uh, disc and this date and uh, hours move as well. First time I'm working on uh, this type of watch. So let's see what we can find. And let's see if this mechanism is working as well while we disassemble everything. Just removing the winding stem there. And we should be able to take the mechanism out of the case. There we go, perfect. It's a beautiful brown dial there with a second in, in the middle. You see the brand, Mati. I will talk a bit more about this brand actually, which is uh, yeah still running today. Removing this copper ring around, keeping the caliber inside the case nice and centered. Just remove the small second hand, which is in the middle, which is actually the only end on the on the on the watch. There is no other hour and minute hand, so yes, uh, that's quite strange. Yeah, screws on a dial. Obviously, you don't see it with the kind of square crystal on top, and we can see we can start to see the mechanism. With the day here, mechanic with the day, with a kind of jumper and the spring. I'm gonna remove this big plate on top, big metal plate, all by these two little screws. And under we should see, hopla, it's jump. Wow, look at all these numbers. It looks like a roulette, yeah? Uh, okay, so first, I'm gonna disassemble the rest because yeah, I'd, didn't know how to disassemble this uh, all this disc on the other side, so I'm just taking the power now out of the out of the caliber. We should see the balance now that the main spring is fully unloaded. We should see the balance coming to a full stop. There we go, perfect. I'm gonna start to disassemble the automatic system winding system there. Pretty simple, you see, just few wheels. Okay. 
just a system there for the reversing, just to make sure the system is winding in both directions when the rotor turns in both directions. We have a click there with a spring. And then we can start disassemble the rest of the mechanism. The movement looks quite clean, but actually it was a lot of big particle of dust inside. Um, so yeah, that was quite strange. Uh, like you see a lot of, um, yeah, piece of fabric or I don't know, like in uh, in some places. So obviously it needed need a good clean. And this is the amplitude as it was not bad on a time grapher, but uh, I think it can be better. I have no idea when it was the last time it was serviced this mechanism. Looks clean as well, no, not too many cr scratches. And you see here, you have a big fiber on top there, where it's just jumped with the spring. Just removing the jewel there from the balance, so you see that we get clean separately later on in a, in a cleaning machine. And the balance there, the balance bridge was really tight. I, used a, I had to use a screwdriver, which I really don't like to do, but I have no other choice because it was so tight, yeah, on the, on the main plate there. Here. Okay, I'm removing now the pallet fork, cock, and uh, later on the pallet fork. Be less tight here. And now I'm just going to remove the train of wheel bridge. We're going to have all these nice gears underneath. There we go. Gonna remove them one by one. Oh, it just jumped there. Just checking as well all the pivot point of each wheels, if they are in good state, if there is anything broken or bent or anything. But yeah, it looks looks good. It looks very good. Another spring, and you will see on this mechanism there is a lot of spring. Okay, so we move to the dial side, and I'm going to remove actually the first disc there. It's uh, friction mounted there, so I have to use Perfler just to lift it up very gently. There we go. So that's for the minute. Then we have the hour, the uh, hour disc. And obviously on the outside, uh, we have the date. At the hour disc. Wow, well, look underneath, like the amount of parts that there is on the dial side. That looks quite complicated, yeah. Have this big star wheel there for the hour, another spring. And you see again, we see some dust there on a, on a shock setting. Another spring here for the quick set, uh, jump, for the jumping of the date. Which is really hard to remove this one, very tight, very strong. You see me always using two tools just to make sure like the spring doesn't jump. Don't like to release. Yeah, here we go. That's it. Perfect. Can remove the date disc now. And we are going to disassemble the rest of the mechanism. All of this is to drive. You see, it's much more complex than uh, uh, just a watch with hands, you know, like just our minute and second hands. Like a lot more parts. A lot of springs. Okay, we just need to remove what was it? We'll just jump there. Another spring underneath. That's why the wheel just jump, yeah. Again, you see the fiber there under under the screw? Try to remove obviously all these fibers and dust when we're gonna clean each parts. You can see there as well. Again, some dust, some fibers. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the keyless work, which is actually quite different compared to a standard keyless work. Like again, this wa this watch I find it very complicated. Like a uh, lot of parts, lot of springs. Um, yeah, it was mechanism which was like, yeah, a bit over-engineered, I think. This is a keyless work there, a lot of, uh, lot of extra parts. Some of the parts 
in some other calibers they're actually made in one piece and here it's like two or three pieces to make the same job if you want another spring here and that's it we are going to remove the last few parts from the caliber and the trick part will be to put back everything together because yeah you saw that was a lot of parts a lot of springs picking the jewels I just remove any dried up oil or grease placing back the balance safe place to keep it during cleaning Just do a gentle polish on each pivot point from the different wheels. Again, just to remove any dried up oil or grease and uh, the wheels will be finished to be clean in a cleaning machine. So we're gonna put all the parts in these baskets and uh, these baskets will go in a, inside a cleaning machine in the vint my vintage Elma cleaning machine. And all the parts will be new and shiny and ready to be assembled back on the, on the watch. And you see, there's quite a lot of parts on this uh, model for, for a simple watch because it's just an automatic watch um, with time and date and date. It's not that complicated. And that's it. We start the cleaning now. So we do first a clean and two rinsing, two stages of rinsing, and the last one will be drying. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. You can find the link down below in the description. And I would like to thank all of my existing patrons which are supporting the channel. So Philip, Roger, Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Rune, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the channel. Uh, if you want to join a group, that will help me a lot uh, to uh, put better content down there. You can find the link down below in the description. You can go to my Patreon page and you will be able to subscribe to one of the plans. So thanks in advance. As well, if you did not subscribe to the channel, click put, click on a thumbs up if you like the video. You click on subscribe and on the bell icon, you will get a reminder. I try to put a video once a week. Uh, so yeah, you will get a reminder every time I put a, a video. So thanks in advance for subscribing. Just doing a very light clean of the dial with, uh, with some product there. Very, just very gently, very light. Gonna focus now on the on the parts for the case. Look at the O-ring and the seal there is so dried up. So I'm gonna change it obviously. Same on the crystal, there is a, a seal there that is fully dry. And I'm gonna put all the parts in a uh, ultrasonic machine. And actually I have a, a discount for you if you want to use this uh, ultrasonic machine, which is a very good one for if you want to do uh, watchmaking as a hobby or professionally. I have the link down below in the description to uh, to get this um, this ultrasonic machine and I have a 5% discount as well for you uh, if you want to buy it, yeah. So you find all the information down below in the description of the video. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, a few things, I'm gonna polish the crystal because uh, obviously you see the shape of the crystal is very uh, very uh, different, it's not a round crystal, so very tricky to, ch to find. So I'm just gonna polish it to have it uh, very shiny and I'm just gonna do a gentle polish as well on the case, but I just want to keep the center, you see satin parts uh, uh, intact, like I don't want to, to polish it. So I'm gonna protect it with some captain tape, uh, which is a tape that resists to heat. I'm um, gonna polish first the crystal. So that's what I'm doing now. With a very light polish, just going to remove all the scratches from uh, from the crystal. Go very gently. And here's the step now. I'm just going to do a very light polish as well because uh, obviously it's chrome plated, just to to make it a bit more shiny. Uh, just a gentle polish on the shiny part of the case. Okay, so now that the parts are clean, I'm gonna reassemble everything. But first, I'm gonna treat a couple of parts in Epilam. So I'm putting the part in this special bottle, which is very expensive bottle. 
And uh, yeah, the pilon will help to retain the oil on the surface of these parts. Just gonna dry them now. Remove the pilon from the pivot point of the escape and the pallet fork. And I'm gonna oil the jewels. And you see the jewels? There is a big one and a small one. And when that's the case, you need to be very careful because uh, obviously like there is one way to put it and not because they are not the same. So the big one, that's a big one where I put a drop of oil in the middle and this is a small one. The big one, most of the time go on a balance side. That's a big one there, you see, because obviously the watch most of the time is on the dial standing right up um, and uh, the balance is on the bottom side. So it means the, the pivot point from the balance staff, uh, the weight is dragging towards this pivot point there. So that's why most of the time you have a bigger jewel with more oil, uh, because with the gravity that will see more friction if you want that on the other side, because the, the watch are saying most of the time you will have the dial up. Uh, so that's why the bigger jewel always goes most of the time on the, on the, on the balance side. Just checking now if the balance now is lubricated is beating nicely. Checking the air spring if it's flat and fully concentric. Yeah, that looks good. Oiling the point there, you see I put the jewels on the other side where we have the we're gonna put the escape wheel later on. And now we're gonna start the reassembly. And basically when we are reassemble a watch, what we do is we checked all the components when we disassemble it clean them and during the reassembly we're gonna re-oil all the mechanism to make sure it runs smoothly so you will see me putting drop of oil in a lot of different places yeah. putting the springs there oh, we have this kind of click wheel here and now I'm starting to put the train of wheel together Perfect. There we go, put the center wheel there, just make sure everything is connected as bad as we can before we put the bridge on top. And you see there, yeah, this one go on top here, perfect. I put the bridge, gonna align all the pivot points in the jewels, which are this tiny ruby, you see color there, and you see, wow, we went just straight away, went inside. All the wheels are turning, so I keep gentle pressure on the bridge here while putting a screw, tightening it, and that's it. Let's check if it's still turning. Yeah, perfect. Putting there the mainspring assembly here. Click in position, very tricky to put in position and with another spring. Again, that's not the simplest design I saw on a watch. Quite tricky to put back. And we put a bridge on top so we keep all these parts together. Just need to make sure everything is aligned. Yeah, perfect. And when it is, gonna secure everything with the screw. So this watch actually, is, uh, you saw at the beginning, is a Mati, uh, Mati watch, which is a, a French brand from Besançon, which is a, a small town not far from the Swiss uh, border. And uh, actually, this brand, it was it was uh, a brand that wanted to sell watches uh, by mail, not online, obviously, because at the time it was no internet. Uh, so you could order your watch, and they had a catalog. You could order your watch online and uh, they started to make jewelry and after yeah obviously the catalog became bigger and bigger with more watches more jewelry um and it became more a jeweler store rather than uh, than, than a watch even they still have some watches later on quartz watches um and yes this company is still is still on today there are few shops 
and obviously still a catalog where you can buy, uh, um, like I said, mainly jewelries. Uh, but yeah, it's quite funky to have uh, this watch from, like I said, the 70s and 80s. And it was, uh, the, if you want, the first kind of brand or one of the few brands where you can buy watches uh, by mail. So yeah, that was quite, uh, that was quite something. Yeah, it was quite, uh, quite an idea and actually which is still running today. Um, yeah, so you, you will see a lot of uh, Mati uh, watches and a lot of different design, like this one, which has a very particular, particular design with this digital uh, way of uh, putting the hour. But yeah, that's a, a, a French, part of uh, French uh, watch history, if you want, with the first uh, watches that were sold by mail and mass produced. In, 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 in fact, yeah, it was uh, yeah, quite cheap cheap watches for the time, uh, but like, yeah, it was not obviously like a, a Rolex or an Omega. Uh, but yeah, I was quite frankie actually when I, I saw some uh, history about this brand. And uh, yeah, it's still, it's still running today, so that's quite good. Okay, so now I'm putting back the keyless work. See me greasing there the different points. Again, another spring, which is very strange, this one, because you need to go one side of a kind of pivot point there. Yes, that's like that, yeah, perfect. And this is a mechanism as well for the quick side data it was not working. So we see if we manage to fix it when the, when the watch will be done. Putting back the yoke with the yoke spring. Here we go, putting some wheels there. Setting lever spring here in position with this blue screw. Just checking everything is working. And yeah, you see that when I'm pulling on it, that was the, the spring action there. That should be the quick side date mechanism. So Looks like it's working when I'm pulling on it. So we see when we have the watch uh, back together, if it's, uh, if it's fully working. And the last part there from the keyless work, which is keeping the wheel and the uh, setting lever in position. Okay, so now we, we move to the balance side and uh, gonna put the pallet fork in position. Gonna oil as well the pallet fork. Always do it on a microscope, so don't have it in a camera. Yeah, oh, you see that it just dropped in a pivot point here. Just putting a bit of a wind in the watch, putting some power in the mechanism, some power inside the mainspring. And uh, we you should see like now, when we move the pallet fork, yeah, you see it clicking, so it's good. The power is coming to the pallet fork. Gonna put the balance assembly and let's see if the movement want to start or not. Very gently put it in position. Just making the wheel move ever so slightly there. Yes, perfect. It's beating. Just secure it with a screw. And that's it, we have the base movement which is uh, working so now we can focus on uh, complication so we're gonna reassemble all this funky mechanism where we, for the date uh, day and hour and minute as well on this watch yeah because this is uh, yeah different compared to a, to a standard watch where we have a minute wheel a cannon pinion and an hour wheel uh, this is like a lot more parts Okay, so we secure like this plate with a screw here, putting the jumper for the date with another spring here again. I think in this movement, actually, there is more spring than uh, on a chronograph mechanism, which already has quite a lot of springs, but uh, I didn't count the number of springs, but that's quite a lot, yeah, actually, on, uh, on this caliber. Uh, fortunately, they are quite different from one another, so you know where they go. Uh, but yeah, that's a lot of spring on this, on this caliber. Yep, 
just putting now the sub wheel intermediate wheel for the date mechanism And it's played there, we keep the date in position, date wheel, that we should be able to put right now. Okay, quite a big and deep date wheel. Okay, we have this jumper there that I need to pull. Just gonna use another tweeter just to pull this jumper here, oh, the spring just went underneath. There we go. And now I just need to put the date wheel and release very gently. Perfect. It's in position. Just going to use my automatic oiler that to put a drop of red oil from so 9104 ah you see now it's turning perfect it's connected to the other side so i'm gonna secure it with this blue screw <laughs> lubricate some pivot point here as well that's actually for the date mechanism to have a quick state, a quick change of date. So I'm going to put this spring, which is quite tricky to put this one on his, on his arm there. Just going to release, but you see it's going on top, it's going underneath, not going to, in the right place. And when you manipulate the spring, you need to be always very careful because it can jump. And if it jumps, you will, yeah, sometimes you will find it, but sometimes you will not find it. And this whole mechanism parts are very difficult to find so you need to be very careful very strong I struggle a lot like to set these parts with the with the springs need to go against try to use one finger that doesn't work so I'm just gonna release it very quickly just put it in place and release it against yeah that's it perfect always tense moment when you manipulate the spring because yeah like I said they can jump and uh, yeah if you lose them that's a pain just put this part which is a spring as well that I'm arming right now against uh, this kind of uh, lever there putting this beautiful gold wheel that will drive the hour mechanism. Putting the hour wheel. Arming the spring, which is just underneath. There we go, perfect. And I'm putting now the minute disc. Aligning everything properly. And now everything is assembled. We should be able to put back everything in these uh, rings and maintain the caliber in position. So that's the first one. Can put back the plate on top. And actually on this plate, we'll have still few parts to put back. So we'll have the mechanism for the day. We have the date. Gonna check now. So we see we change the time. Let's check if the date is switching. Not there, that was 12 o'clock, and let's see at midnight. Yes, we have a jump just before midnight. Perfect. Let's do it again. Just gonna do another turn just to make sure he's jumping. He should jump like. Now. Oop, you see the spring there? That's what I was talking about. 
I was good. I was keeping it in position just, uh, yeah, for this uh, indicator, for this jumper, more for the for the day. And I'm putting in position. There we go. That's a day wheel. And I place back this beautiful dial, very 70 as well in the color, with this brown, or like a bit like a rust color, yeah? Secure with the screw. The second hand, I just place on top and I'm gonna press it down with my Rotec tool. And we should be able to put back everything inside the caliber, inside the case, sorry. With the winding stem, stems that will align everything. Perfect. Last part to assemble, we still have the automatic winding system to put back together. Gonna secure now the case, the caliber inside the case with the two screws there. So we keep everything tidy. Another spring, the last one actually for the click here, which is uh, for the winding mechanism. I'm gonna place all the wheels in position that it's used for the winding, automatic winding mechanism. And like we did on the rest as well, we oil all the pivot point. <laughs> and a plate that go on top with the jewels. And yeah, that's it. It's a line. Perfect. Can secure that with the screws. Gonna oil again the pivot point using my automatic oiler. Okay. And the last part is big rotor that go on top. Just putting it, pushing it down and just checking, yeah, the winding is working one direction, the other direction, yeah. Perfect. So I can now put the C clip in position to maintain the rotor. Here we go. Just gonna put some new seals. Just gonna lubricate them in moly coat before we put them back on a case back and close the watch and see if it's running and uh, everything as it should. Okay, we see like now when we change the time, the day and the date is changing. That was not the case at the beginning. So that's uh, that's perfect, as good. And you see the date just changing after. Quick demonetization. And I just want to use the opportunity to tell you that I have my own website. You can go there. You will find some uh, history on the channel. And as well, uh, some of the watches that I'm selling, some of the watches that has been restored actually on the channel, you can go there and buy some of my watches. And if you want to send your watch for a restoration, for a service, like on this uh, digital watch, you can go there and contact me. Uh, if you want me to, uh, to service your watch, I will be very happy to do it. And here is the result on the time grapher. You see the amplitude is uh, 316 uh, that went up. Uh, by uh, 40 degree compared to, to the beginning. So that's quite good. The bit error is right around zero and uh, the rate as well is turning around zero. So yeah, the watch is running better, more amplitude. So that's quite good. And you see now this beautiful product. So I hope you like 
this restoration on this vintage watch and I see you for my next episode. Bye bye.